Good morning. Great to be with you again. Glad to have you here as part of our growing family of listeners. You know, we know a few things about all of you folks out there in radio land. We know if you're listening to this program, you are, as I always say, smarter than the average person because, well, of course, that's why you're here. And secondly, uh, you tend to be a little bit older. And if you're one of those folks who are uh, you know, getting a little thin on top, maybe your hair's turned a little bit gray, chances are you are taking several different medications every day. And that can cause a number of issues that we're going to focus on today. It's called adverse drug events. And I did not know until I started looking into this that those events are a leading cause of emergency room visits for people over the age of 80. But it's a problem that can happen and affect you in kind of an insidious way. Some of these issues can kind of just creep up on you over the years as you add more and more medications for more and more doctors. And that's why Greg Russell, pharmacist from Fort Wayne Custom R X is here with us today. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Lee. This is a particular passion of yours, I yeah, understand. Yeah, this is my favorite thing. Completely. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a good pharmacy nerd. This is the stuff I, I live for. Because you're, Give me some examples of what we're talking about here. How yeah. can these problems kind of creep up on you, and, and what kind of a challenge can it be for patients? Sure. So, you know, we've got multiple reasons for this. And, one, and the first reason, of course, is people are taking multiple medications, and they're taking multiple medications from different prescribers from different pharmacies. So the question becomes, who is really screening and really trying to optimize patients' care on that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's kind of what pharmacy should be moving towards. And, uh, you know, the proactive pharmacies are, are moving that direction. So, yeah, we as you age, you tend to see not only your primary care doctor, but usually a specialist or two. There might be a cardiologist involved, and he's prescribing different medications that might not play well with other products you're taking from other doctors. That's right. Walk me through that. Give me an example. Of sure. how that can happen. Yeah, this this is this is something that I've seen similarly. Uh, you know, we'll talk. We've talked many times about the importance of like a mineral magnesium. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's important for heart health. It's important for blood pressure. Uh, it's important for muscles. There's so many different things that magnesium is involved in. But you know, if we start looking at each individual drug that a person might be on. Cumulatively, we might see a situation where the patient's taking multiple medications that might potentially lead to a little magnesium deficiency, and then um, those can create problems. So, would not be uncommon, for example, for somebody to come in and buy omeprazole, the little the little purple pill over the counter, you know, for occasional heartburn, that they state is occasional, but they find out we find out they're taking it five out of seven days a week, mm -hmm. so they're taking it quite frequently. They might be t adding some Zantac or anodyne. Uh, they might be taking. They might be uh, prescribed a blood pressure medication like enalapril. Well, and maybe a diuretic hydrochlorothiazide. Um, they might be taking something like prednisone for asthma. They might drink four or five cups of coffee a day, or two to four cups of coffee a day, or one cup of coffee a day. That has to be determined. Or they might be, and they might drink a, a occasional beer every night. Mm -hmm. So all these things have in common. They all deplete magnesium. So cumulatively, over periods of years, we could be causing a magnesium deficiency. So I get it. So the, we're not talking about a side effect of a medication. It's the cumulative effect of these things. It's the cumulative effect of these things. And as I had a pharmacy professor once tell me, there's no such thing as a side effect. It's an effect of the medication. So as I tell people, you know, medications are bombs. You know, you take them and they affect multiple systems. We don't know what system is, we, we, for example, the drug may drop your blood pressure, but it may be doing something else. Mm -hmm. uh, so we talk about uh, miprazole, for example. Uh, it turns off your stomach acid. Well, that's great, except it also has an effect on your gut bacteria that we've talked about in the past. And so that's not a side effect. That's an actual effect in that medication. It's just going to manifest itself differently in different people. So somebody might get diarrhea, for example. You might get diarrhea, and I might not. So you know that's that's the interesting thing. And you and you know we're not medical professionals. You you may not recognize that you're feeling lousy because you've got this combination of things that are stacking up on top of you. That's exactly right. So the goal is to be proactive and try to look through these patients' medications. So what we're talking about here is not just a, an occasional glance through. It's actually sitting down, kind of through a view of what I call the seven medication-related problems that we as pharmacists that do medication therapy management, which is the term medication therapy management, it, we're, we're looking through trying to find these things. So, for example, I might find somebody's taking thyroid.
thyroid, okay? And somebody did not, and they're also taking an antacid or a multiple vitamin, and they're taking them at the same time. Well, those two type of, uh, of interventions, uh, the antacid or the multiple vitamin, they're going to have minerals in them that actually bind up the thyroid, so the thyroid doesn't work. Oh, and so, so there's I'm some not getting better because the, <laughs> my thyroid is not well managed because I'm taking the medications wrong. Exactly. So it's a it's sitting down, really looking at a patient's medications, doing an interview, find out what they're taking, how they're taking it, and trying to optimize to make sure they're taking their their medications properly. Yeah, I get that. And Medicare is is recognizes this is a big problem, and they've put a program in place to to help get people to take advantage of what you as a pharmacist know. That's right. So um, I have to separate myself a little bit from this because, as you know, I don't take insurance. Mm -hmm. But Medicare does give this benefit to patients that are age 65 and older, I believe, and that are taking five or more medications. And there are certain targeted medications. And so your pharmacy should be... Um, uh, making some interventions for for you on your behalf anyway. They so take advantage of those Medicare MTM programs because they are advantage. Now they have some limitations. One is you got the government paying for it, so it may not be a super quality program, mm -hmm. um, but at least it's better than nothing. Right. And and second of all, they they. They look at making therapeutic switches more. So, for example, they may say, okay, instead of being on omiprazole, you should be on Nexium because the plan pays for that. So there are some differences in their type of program than my type of program. So tell me about what it is that you want to do with patients. Sure. Well, what we want to do is have a sit-down conversation. We would like the patients to bring in their medications. We'd like the patients to um, bring in their lab work. And then we, we sit and... Um, we, we have a questionnaire and uh, that we have patients fill out ahead of time. So this is a scheduled appointment. And we actually sit down with the patient and go through them and ask a lot of questions, find out how they're taking it. We want to make sure that, A, they understand why they're taking their medication, and you know, the, and they understand the goals or what the doctor's plan for them is. And it's amazing to me sometimes when I sit down, somebody doesn't really remember why they're taking this medication. So one of the things that we, one of the, the medical related problems we have is not adherence. And there's several different reasons why somebody might not adhere to their medication. Yeah, cost, not, a, not not the least of them. Certainly. But then other factors that come along at the right. same time. Right, may not know why they're taking that medication. Exactly. Do I still need it? Mm -hmm. uh, if if uh, Give me an example of kind of some of the things you've heard from patients, um, symptom, or, or, or consequences, not symptoms, but consequences that they are experiencing because they've mixed medications wrong or they're just not managed well. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. One of the, my biggest ones that I see is that um, when a patients are put on sleeping medications, you know, um, they, they end up tending to uh, to be drowsy. So there's a uh, a a, a, simp a there is a standard of care called the beers less, and those are medications that typically we don't like the elderly to be put on. And uh, one of the things that some of these medications can do is cause confusion, or they can cause people to be drowsy, or they can cause people to get dizzy and fall. So some of my you know, favorite villains are drugs like Valium or Xanax, because mm -hmm. those medications will actually, in the long run, actually deplete melatonin. Well, melatonin, of course, is the sleep hormone right. that we have. You know? So those are, those are some things unattended, you know, so we would hope that patients would work on sleep hygiene and some of the other things first before they just get put on those type of medications. So if you are taking a cardiac, a medication for a heart condition, mm -hmm. uh, that's probably one of the leading uh, things you need to be paying attention to, and that is so, so common. So many people are. We're going to jump into that when we come back and talking more with Greg Russell about what's going on with medication therapy management, how your pharmacist can help you make sure that the meds you are taking are playing well together and are not causing you problems with your health. And we're here to take your questions as well at 800-333-1190 or 447-1190. Puts you right in touch with Greg Russell from Fort Wayne Custom Rx on the Health Call Live Radio Hour on WoWo. Um, we are here today talking about something called medication therapy management, which really just is getting the pharmacist involved in helping you manage all 
all the meds that you're taking so that you don't run into something called an adverse drug event. So let's talk about these categories in which these things can happen. Sure. And one of them you said is non-adherence. So that I get, you just you forget or you can't afford to take your med or one of those things. Sure, yeah, or just don't know why you are taking that med or forgot that that was part of your doctor's plan. So, you know, again, some simple things, you know, the, the pill box, you know, the seven-day pill uh, boxes can be helpful. Uh, uh, again, w- for us, what we do is we make a medication list for patients as they, as we're doing this, this we provide them a medication uh, list. We highlight, you know, how they're supposed to take the medications at what time and try to help them organize that. Um, we're not going to go to your house and put your stuff in your pills for you, <laughs> right. but, you know, we try to give you that information so you can make those decisions. This, this is a great, uh, you know, topic conversation to have with mom or dad you know uh, you know as we, you and I both are dealing with aging parents yes we are you know and uh, to trying to help them organize help them be aware, at least having a family member aware exactly why mom or dad is taking these medications is really important. We're having a mess right now with the family member and trying to get uh, those cardiac medications adjusted along with mm-hmm. the insulin, uh, the uh, yeah, diabetes medications adjusted and trying to figure all that out. So it really is kind of a challenge. Yeah, so we're kind of part of that team to try to help that. Yeah. So unnecessary medications. Now, yeah, this, is <laughs> this is a big one. Yeah, this one's a huge one. So again, um, there's there's multiple reasons for this. So let's say you get sent to the hospital and you get put on a medication and a doctor puts you on it in a hospital, but then nobody really monitors it. Nobody really takes you off of it. And all of a sudden, years later, you're still on it. Hmm. This this does happen quite a bit. Or that medication now is available over the counter. So now I just, on my own, decide I'm going to start taking it. And remember, uh, even over-the-counter medications are medications. So, you know, you have to be careful how, the, how you use them. But um, my favorite drug that I love to pick on is omeprazole. You know, people are supposed to take that for two weeks or in the hospital, you know, for your therapy. But you're not supposed to be on that indefinitely without a doctor's care. And uh, sometimes people get kind of hooked onto it because it is a, it's a strong medication. It, it's fabulous for stopping ulcers and great for GERD, um, which is a reflux disease, right. heartburn. Um, but, you know, long term, this, this drug causes us lots of problems. So, you know, just trying to educate people trying to figure out how we could get them off that and again we're not doctors and we're not, we didn't prescribe it so we have to do that with in, co- in partnership with your doctor um, or at least have those conversations with you how do doctors feel about it when you reach out and, and... Uh, in, in most cases you know it's um, uh, they're very they're receptive and the fact that you can help them with their patients understand how to take their medications and as far as taking people off medications um, there's always a reason you know and doctors are trying to save patients medications and they don't want patients to take unnecessary medications mm-hmm. but they also realize it's difficult to sometimes to get people off these certain medications and uh, oh, just just to tidy up that point omep- om- omeprazole is what how do I know what oh, I'm taking it's, that's that's the prilosec that that you mm-hmm. see, which is over the counter, um, and that's the one that, like we said, it just turns off those acid uh, secreting pumps in the stomach. The problem is the body gets used to those acid secreting pumps being turned off. So after a while, you know, if you try to go off that medication, those pumps turn on in a vengeance, and now your heartburn's even worse. So again, we're not talking about an ulcer or bleeding ulcer here. Right. We're talking about you know occasional use, um, or and people just can't get off them. So not only is it a challenge of taking unnecessary medications, there's also medications that either are ineffective or it's not the right dose. Right. And, you know, it could be too high or it could be too low. And again, a lot of times patients don't even know that they should be kind of monitoring some of these effects. So let's say I'm taking a blood pressure medication. If you ask somebody, well, what's your blood pressure running? And they say, well, when I was in my doctor's visit, it was 140 over, you know, 90. Okay. So what is the doctor's goal for you? And... Do you have a home monitoring kit? Are you measuring your blood pressure? It's simple to do. Uh, are you measuring your blood pressure to see what your numbers are looking like? If you went into your doctor's office with a diary of what your blood pressure readings were, it'd be a lot easier for your doctor to be able to help you um, pick the appropriate uh, dosage. And, you know, we are doing just that with a family member right now. And it's amazing how much uh, morning to night and the blood pressure just is all over the place. It, it, it can like be. crazy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
I get that. So dosage modification, you, you become accustomed to a medication, your body adjusts to it, and now you need more for it to have the effect? Yeah, you know, and, and you know, we, for example, we, we take a look at blood pressure or heart medications, you know, we're making the assumption that the body's staying the same. So I get put on a medication uh, for my blood pressure 10 years ago. Well, the body changes, the heart gets weaker or the vessels get harder, um, cholesterol goes up, things of that nature. There's changes all the time. So if you're not monitoring those things, you might be ineffectively not treating your blood pressure appropriately. And I think when you're in tune to what's going on, so I'll just take body weight for an example. If you're, if you're weighing yourself a couple times a week, you're getting at least the information. You might be able to notice earlier that uh, that you, you, you're you gaining weight. Right. Whereas if you get on the scale every six months, all of a sudden you're 25 pounds heavier than you were two or three years ago, and you really didn't catch that you were gaining weight as much, except your pants are getting tighter. Right, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So if uh, if I want to take advantage of this, who what are the meds that you think are, are most at I should be paying attention to most closely, and uh, how do we get in touch with you? What do you want us to do? Well, I think, again, um, uh, if, if you look at the major disease states um, that we are monitoring for, patients that are on heart medications, patients that are taking diabetes medications, people and thyroid medications, um, people that, patients that have osteoporosis. Um, so we're talking about the, the big disease states. Those are the ones that, that most patients are taking medications for and they you know the goal is the modern medicine modern prescription medications are great if people know how to use them mm -hmm. but they can cause problems that people don't so uh, contacting us at the pharmacy so we can sit down typically it's a 30 minute to a one hour conversation uh, that we have um, and you know we're gonna we're gonna come in for that nutritional slant that's something that most pharmacists don't have the ability to do and we have you know data bases that help us pick those things out um, but uh, you know and of course the experience of, of doing this over time over years indirectly yeah I was just I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one of the things that I know I count on you for is uh, you know what can I do short of taking a medication is there other are there other products that are tested and known to be effective and so you're going to work that into the conversation as well. absolutely you know and again that's a patient choice you know what do they want as far you know it's your health is only what you're going to put into it right mm -hmm. so yeah that's great so I spend about an hour with you and then what do I leave with okay so what we will do is we'll put together a, a, a medication list uh, for you and tell you best how to do it we'll give you some some information data sheets on those medications um, we'll come up with a plan you know basically plan hey if we see that there's problems how are we gonna how are we gonna move forward on this and that's really I think the the major important thing you know hey have you thought about this have you talked to your doctor about this we'll give you questions to ask your doctor mm -hmm. so that you can fine-tune your your medication then do I need to transfer all my scripts to you or is this can be done if I'm still need to see you know a pharmacy well, that might be closer here's more the convenient. coolest thing I don't make any money selling you prescription medications because I don't do that so you know uh, we do compound medications now on that omiprazole example I gave earlier, the Prilosec, let's say you're on a 40 milligram Prilosec and we can't take you off 40 milligrams pretty easy. There's a 40 milligram and a 20 milligram dosage. What if we had to compound you a 35 milligrams and we could take you down to 35 milligrams one week and then 30 milligrams the next week and 25? We could compound a medication. There, there is something we could do. But in general, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be your, a consultant, not so much sell you a, a product, a prescription medication. Very good. Good. And how do I reach you? What's your phone number? 260-490-3447. And if that came past you too quickly, uh, you can always go to fwcustomrx.com. Find them there. The phone number is there. And that will put you in touch with Greg Russell and the team at Fort Wayne Custom yep. Rx. And, of course, ask for Paula, my nurse. She does all my scheduling. Oh, yeah. And Paula's <laughs> great. She yeah. is. She's a treat. Yes, yes, you will is. enjoy dealing with her, as all with all the other team that we have met at Fort Wayne Custom Rx.